I'm excited to share with you my all-new Uber Shader for Substrate. I designed the original Uber Shader for Unreal to mirror the functionality and feel of familiar shaders from offline renderers such as Autodesk Maya's standard surface. You can check out the video demo for that in the link above. Meanwhile, Epic has been working in a similar direction and announced a completely new material system that they call Substrate, which is eventually planned to replace the legacy suite of shading models such as Default Lit and Clear Coat in Unreal. Substrate can much more closely match a shader of an offline render such as the Autodesk Center's Surface, including features like thin film iridescence, sheen, and so on, but more importantly, the proper blending of material layers. Now it's important to understand that Substrate is not an improvement or add-on to the legacy material suite in Unreal. It's a completely either-or replacement of it on the project level. So for this reason, I'll continue to support my Uber shader for legacy materials. And parallel to that, I'm releasing as a new independent product, the Uber shader for Substrate. To do that, I've completely rebuilt my Uber Shader for Substrate from the ground up to take advantage of all the new functionality in Substrate. This is organized into four master materials, the Uber Advanced, which is the main workhorse, the Uber Layer material, taking advantage of the ability to combine different uh, material substances and layers, the Uber Thin for thin translucent surfaces such as leaves or uh, curtains on windows, and the Uber Glass for glass-like surfaces. So without further ado, let's dive in and take a look. So I have here on the left the original Uber shader for the legacy material system, and then over here on the right I've got the Uber shader for substrate. And you can see that the base color parameters are a parallel to each other. Also, the base color corrections are pretty much exactly the same. I have added in here a hue shift, but other than that, they're identical. I've got the bump section is the same. The emission section is the same. The sheen is essentially the same. I've got in here both sheen weight and two-tone weight. In this one, it's pretty much just a two-tone. Two-tone lets you put in any color you want, whereas a sheen has to be additive. An example of that would be this denim material here, which is darkening on the glancing angles, as well as this silk material, also darkening on the glancing angles, as opposed to this velvet or this cotton material, which is lightening up on the glancing angles, and last but not least, this felt material which is also lightening up on the glancing angles with the sheen. And then continuing down on here, we've got the specular sections which are essentially parallel. A difference is you now with substrate can actually have a color for the specular color which wasn't possible in the shader before, and the same thing on the specular coat. I now have a color in here, but besides that, the parameters are the same. You've got double roughness, specular index of refraction, packed maps, anisotropic rotation, tangent mapping, and so on. The UV controls are also the same in both including the ability to have separate UV controls for each map. All of that stuff, I'm just going to refer you to the previous video for details on the usage of that, but this is, as you can probably recognize, really, really parallel to what you're going to have in a Arnold Standard Surface Shader, so it's, it's, it should be really familiar to those of you who are coming from things like Maya. The things that's different in the Uber shader for substrate is stochastic flakes, also known as glint. You see I've got that here on this like sparkly shader. Got some glint on this. Here I've got this uh, 7-Eleven Slurpee material using glint and this snow material, which is really nice to have this kind of glint flakes of the snow on here. Just gorgeous. And another thing that's significantly different about uh, this uh, Uber Shader for Substrate is 
really the subsurface scattering section. So that subsurface scattering is being used on this snow material and it's of course being used on this skin material and you just get much nicer results than you could with the old legacy material system. And on top of that, all of the parameters for the subsurface scattering are all in here before they had to be on a separate subsurface profile. And here they're contained within the shader. So we got the weight. You can see it looks, you know, really hard here without it. And then put it on, you get that nice soft translucent look of subsurface scattering. We've got the scale, so you can kind of crank it up and get really, really high values to make it look like really goopy, like a gummy bear frog. And then we have the, the phase anisotropy, which is for uh, backward and forward scattering. So it's just it's just a much nicer implementation of uh, subsurface scattering with substrate. And then the other two new things that are not in the original Uber shader, or not possible with the old shader system, are, as I already talked about, the stochastic flakes, or glint, and thin film iridescence. That's, for example, here. We've got, of course, the weight on, and then we've got these two thicknesses. This symbol here, this stands for micrometers, which is one one thousandth of a nanometer. So that's just for artistic convenience because I wanted to have a value between zero and one. So it's micrometers divided by two because the acceptable range is going to be between zero and two. The acceptable range, therefore, for nanometers would be between zero and two thousand. And so I'm just sort of converting it or normalizing it down to a zero to one range to get that nice differentiation. But you can see here with these two thin film thickness values combined together with my packed map, I can just sort of dial in these different values and get these different kind of looks, which is pretty awesome. So I've got this example here, here's an example of, again, thin film thickness kind of emulating uh, a housefly. And then here I've got kind of going for sort of a oxidized metal, I guess. And then here I have this on a soap bubble. So this is jumping a little bit ahead with the uh, glass shader, which I'll get to in just a second. Let's next take a look at the Uber glass for a substrate. And here I've got a material instance of that and some examples. So let's start off with this one. I'm calling this one plastic because it doesn't really do a whole lot of uh, refracting through this. And so it's just basically kind of transparent. It's distorting it a little teensy bit, as you can see. And that's because I've got the index of refraction set to 1.1, which is a lot less than glass. The, the issue at the moment with Unreal in general with refractions, uh, including with substrate, is that it doesn't actually give you proper refraction results. And to do that, you really have to use the path tracer. The path tracer is at the moment like partially supported in substrate or for substrate. So we're still needing to kind of use like uh, tricks around getting the with with the regular Unreal lit rendering where we need to do some tricks on this. It does have some cool new features in it. One of them is the ability to do rough refractions. So if I jump over to this guy here, I've got kind of a, a frosted glass look in here. So if I turn the transmission roughness to zero, and 
then you'll see that the roughness on the specular is not having any effect on the transmission and we have a separate dial for it here. So going again here from top to bottom we've got the base color the base color you're pretty much going to want to just have on white for transparent glass. You could, uh, as I've done here on this, set it to have a tint for tinted glass. Here I've got kind of a tinted green glass look. Over here I've tinted it to be red to get the look of red wine. And then over on this guy here I've used a combination of tinting the color as well as adding in roughness on it to get the appearance of honey. So that's kind of some fun stuff you can do with uh, the, the base color, the transmission roughness. And then we've got the bump on here. You can see I've just made it a little bit kind of like uh, a little bit of a lumpy variation for my honey look on this guy and then we've got the specular controls those are pretty much paralleling what you're going to have in the uber shader and then in the top coat that here let's look at this example here that's so if you want to add in kind of like a layer of dust and maybe scratches on top of the glass you can have that top coat layer so so here I've got this uh, grime opacity and it's using the maps from the packed maps in here. And you can target some pretty subtle looks with that. With that in mind, let's take a look at our car and how I've implemented on that. So you can see here that I've got on the windshield here, I've got kind of this sort of scratched highlights that it's picking up. So uh, you'll see here that I have the transmission IOR set to 1, which effectively means nothing in the world of index of refraction. So this is kind of a, a trick that's used for uh, in, in a render like uh, Arnold or RenderMan where you have like a thin walled appearance and the way that I'm doing that here is similar to what I would do on an Arnold standard surface shader. I've got the IOR set to 1, which makes it the refractive index of error. And what that does is it makes it so that we get nothing in the specular. So if I come into the coat weight and turn that off, and we only have on the specular weight here, you can see that nothing's happening and that's why it says here affects specular. So if I put this back to some more normal value like 1.5, then now I do get my specular and I have all of my specular controls doing something. So I can, you know, put this on like this and get all these nice things going in here with my map and stuff. But at the same time, I'm seeing this weird distortion as I look through the windshield. You see how that, that that strangeness that's happening here. For one thing, it's taking the car and seeing itself inside of there, which you can kind of see as like uh, the, the fake refractions that it's doing here. And as I lower this down, the transmission IOR, you can see that it slowly comes back into being perfectly transparent. But as the closer I get to here, the less specular reflections I'm going to get. So look at this highlight here, and it just kind of disappears. So the workaround for that is that you set that to that, so we get the transparent appearance we want. And then I just come into my coat weight and turn that on, and I get exactly what I want. Next up is the Uber Thin for Substrate. This is essentially an emulation of the two-sided foliage material that they have in the legacy 
material system and I've got it applied here to uh, Megascans uh, plant and also to this lampshade here and so if we let's focus on the plant just for a second um, you've got the parameters in here pretty straightforward the base color base color corrections bump specular with uh, double roughness controls then we have the translucency and the translucency has a strength control as well as a tint and a desaturation for it and if I move this around here so we're kind of coming from behind the sun you can see the sunlight shining through the plant here let me get it so it's like there that's kind of nice and you can then see what the strength does and similar uh, concept is the translucency of a something like a, a curtain with light coming in from behind it or a, in this case a lampshade and so it's just the same material but I've got an actual light inside here and the light is shining through my lampshade last but certainly not least is the brand new uber layer shader and this allows you to have uh, two uber shaders that are combined together with a mask so here I'm taking a Megascans asset and I'm swapping out one of the materials with the mask that comes with it to make it look like it has sort of moss at the base of it adding in sheen and all sorts of fun stuff the, the way the shader is organized is you've got A over B and I've named A as a top and B as background so hopefully that helps it to be a little more clear but you've got as you can see here sort of this side by side of the sheen with uh, material A and material B um, then we've got the, the base color atop and then under that is the base color background and so on and this is really only possible with substrate because as I mentioned before substrate has for the first time like really proper blending of different materials with each other which was not really possible to do properly in the old uh, shader legacy sh shader suite so here, here I'm making the rocks wet on here it's kind of fun just basically because you have separate controls you can target completely different looks for each part of the, the shader here I have a third one and I'm gonna switch this over and change the moss and make it into snow and I have a whole bunch of uh, different examples that I'm uh, including on here to get you started. I've got metal with rust, or snow and rock like I have here, and wet and dry dirt. And then I think my favorite is the chocolate chip cookie example. So that wraps it up for the walkthrough of the substrate materials I'll put a link below in the description where you can go find this on the Unreal Marketplace and I hope you have fun playing around with it and experimenting with it it is now definitely in experimental stage it will hopefully substrate will come soon into beta and then eventually be production ready. So exciting times.